on Power Talk today, we are so pleased to be joined by Dr. Joshua Oigara, who's the chief executive of Stand Big Bank Kenya and South Sudan. We have much to talk about, especially in the world of the future of financing and sustainability. Dr. Oigara, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for making time for us here on Power Talk. Um, I want to start by understanding what have been uh, the key drivers of your recent performance. So in your uh, first half of your results, we saw some impressive numbers, uh, an increase in profit by net profit by 48%. What's been the driving this growth? So Yvonne, I would say it's been a, a lot of activities around all our clients, because it's important to see what is happening behind the economy. So on all our businesses, you know, whether it's our large clients, which we have, or a medium-sized enterprises, SMEs and commercial clients, our individual clients, high net worth clients, even on our insurance businesses, what you've seen is more churn, more activities. Our revenues over six months was up 38%, uh, you know, and that shows around the activities that we have. So, so we, we tend to build a business which is more inclusive. And, and because we are diversified today, the balance sheet then has grown in terms of our total assets I look at our loans are actually up today by 12%, mm -hmm. right? And, and that, if you look at our own liabilities, have gone up by 10%. So if you combine those two, Yvonne, between our expansion of our balance sheet and activity of our clients, you then see a significant growth in our profitability for 48%. Yeah, and I want us to talk about, you know, the sort of economic environment in which, um, you know, Stand Big Bank operates. It's obviously diverse markets. Correct. Uh, both Kenya and South Sudan, um, but also, you know, taking a look at also the global economic situation. So tell us about, you know, your bank's profitability versus, um, you know, what happens with socioeconomic development of, of the regions uh, and communities that you serve? So I would say, Yvonne, for banks, you know, financing is really an economic powerhouse. It's actually a change momentum that drives huge impacts across many markets. And so that's the history of finance. And banks sit in the nexus of that transformation. So if you look at our clients, what I like most to see, the activities they do, the empowerment that they do, the jobs that they create, the trade that they follow through across the regions. And yes, global headwinds, have been there. You know, we look at global interest rates, uh, global exchange rates, uh, in inflation globally. What I would say for us is that because we've, we are a long-term business, so we tend to co-build solutions to our clients. So our business model is about empowering growth, transforming life, and changing the perspective of our clients. We actually say as a group, uh, you know, Africa is home, uh, we power growth. We build that businesses. So we've seen the act activities across all sectors of the economies. And I like to say that even in South Sudan, where we've seen some difficulties, the opportunity is to enhance trade, enhance businesses. And that value is then what translates into our business activities for Stanbeck. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes to the issue of sustainability, I mean, I think um, the argument that uh, it's not good or whatever for the bottom line, yeah. that's already done. Uh, businesses must run their, their practices in a sustainable manner. Talk to us about Stanvik's uh, sustainability agenda and the ways in which you have incorporated this uh, across your business uh, activities. I mean, especially now, you know, we are not very far away from our, you know, the world sees a delivery of sustainable development goals by 2030. Mm -hmm. that's, that journey is running. Yeah. And for us, what we believe is that every single fabric of our business or every actions we take must impact positively the future of the planet, the communities we work with. And in the, in the process, we definitely then make returns. So we have many areas we focus on. I'll speak about just a few. So financial inclusion is a big area for our focus. How do we bring in more people, unbanked, more people into our business across the regions where we are? We also look at enterprise development and job creation. It's a big area, Yvonne, as you know, in our market today. How do you create those entrepreneurs, the non-entrepreneurs, the ones that start, the MSMEs, uh, and how do you create the large enterprises to connect them in the business environment we are? And then we look at trade and investment. And because without trade, we then never move our goods and catalyze our industries in our markets. How do we finance that? Uh, we then look at them. Um, Climate finance uh, and climate change. It's a very important area, and I'll talk about it much, much later on. What do we do with energy transitions? What do we do about greening our planet? What investments are we doing in terms of agriculture areas where we are as a bank? And then, you know, we focus much more on health, health as well, which is a major area for screening, you know, areas that we want to build new people into the healthcare systems. And, and then finally, we speak about education because that anchors the skills and knowledge we're going to be able to have. So those 
kind of seven areas are our big focus areas. And if you realize what we do is to build an enterprise, build economic activities, make sure we can build the income levels to catalyze that business or that family. Then you are able to move into the areas of sustainability. How do we build social services? I think if you mix those both, so businesses today are a force for good. Yeah. And I don't think there's a better time in our history or in our generations than now. I don't think that in the future, if you were driving business only for profits, Yvonne, I don't think you'll go very far. You can look at the last 100 years to see what has happened with yeah. those businesses. Yeah, indeed. I want us to zero in on enterprise development, and particularly the SME sector, you know, has been identified by, uh, you know, various uh, thought leaders as the driver for building back better after COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic. So, you know, what's, what's been some of the interventions that Stanbic Bank has done that you have seen great yeah. promise and great return yeah. uh, with the SMEs? So we are very well known, for instance, for data propositions, you know, you know, in terms of what we do for our women entrepreneurs. And, and post-COVID, what really has been a big enabler for our businesses is building those enterprises who are most affected. So we build up a catalytic fund uh, to be able to support them from early funding stages. You know, you can call it more like blended financing for those businesses. And we work with today more than 15 to 20,000 smaller businesses across many counties in Kenya today. So training them, giving them funding, accessing to market, using technology, that is one area for us in terms of the startups. Then there were those SMEs that were already continuing with their business and needed bridge financing. And there we deploy technology. So we have major solutions, for instance, in our SME space uh, that talk about MJK, for instance. How do we provide digital lo loans or facilities to those clients? How do we also anchor financial literacy and financial fitness to them to continue the business that they have? That's a second aspect. And today we have more than 55 to 58,000 of those clients that benefit from these kind of solutions. And then finally, how do you enable them to continue doing what they do good at? Accessing markets. Yeah. Because if you think about the construct of our growth model in our market and in Kenya, how do we leverage the region? Mm. Yeah, because we are in a good cluster market for us in terms of how we operate. And those three areas, and I want to go back and say, when it comes to women entrepreneurs, we've done quite well. Uh, I done a proposition when we launched it two years ago. Our ambition was to provide close to 20 billion shillings um, of lending opportunities for these enterprises. Link them within our own lending ecosystem, our businesses, large enterprises. We are now past that. We've been able to put in much more lending those women entrepreneurs. Actually, our ambition this year now, in the next two years, is to build more than a million of those women entrepreneurs in our own ecosystem. Yeah, and uh, now that we're speaking about, you know, women, uh, I know we were talking about this a little earlier. Um, you know, inclusion is also important. What what does it look like, um, you know, at Stanbic Bank? Uh, you've talked about investing in women and women entrepreneurs, women-led businesses. Um, this is obviously something that's important uh, to you. Um, I, mean, I mean, for us, for, yeah. Stan, for Stanbic Bank and also for the group, a Standard Bank group, this, I mean, diversity is in an area that we we put very much in the heart of our own long-term survival and strategy. So I would say that for us, the values, not, not, so if I speak about gender, for instance, one of the pillars of progress and diversity and areas like disabilities, we've been able to see, if you look at our leadership team in the bank, today more than 60% of our senior leaders are women. Uh, if you look at pay parity in our markets, uh, we're among the few institutions where our women earn much more today Actually, it's 1.5, 1.05, 1.06% than their male colleagues in the organizations. That gives you a lot of value on what we can see in terms of that investment. And then we, then across the organization, we are now 52% uh, men and 48% women across the organizations. And I think you continue to see that investment and value in how we work very closely. So it's very deliberate and very intentional to be able to grow. It also then moves into the areas of disabilities. So we're not there yet, it's a journey in progress. Mm. Today we are less than 1%. Our medium term ambition is to have that lifted to 2 to 2.5%. Yeah, the, the big conversation right now is on the climate, is the African Climate Summit uh, that is coming up in September that Kenya will be honored to host. Um, and, and one of the focus uh, areas of that is investment in green growth, which Stanvik has also been doing um, over the years. It's an important agenda. Absolutely. I mean, and never in our time have yeah. we seen a lot of impacts of climate change in the lives of citizens, not just in Kenya, but across the world. So if you see you know, whether it's floods across many parts of the world, you know, wildfires that you've seen across many of the markets. I mean, I would say for us, 
you know, climate change and also investment in, so energy transition is one area that we invest in. How do we become more green? And, and we've been very much involved in financing big projects on wind, on solar, and that's something we are very much well known for, for infrastructure investments. If you look at just the fast green bond, you know, we were providing the knowledge and capacity and capabilities and also just coordinating that program that ran a year ago. And, and, and remember that it was the first pioneer in the markets that we were able to invest in and progress. And so when you look at the Africa Clim you know, Climate Week that is happening here in September, what we like to see is a little bit much more investment, collaborating and bringing together for lenders. And we, I can assure Yvonne that at our own group level, we will see more than a trillion shillings of investment that will go into green financing for projects, not just for energy, but for sustainability and greening our planet in the next five years. Yeah, and we have the resources to do that and the capability and, uh, you know, the human, uh, you know, capital as well. In our market, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say we sit in a very historic epicenter uh, as a Kenyan population, from knowledge, from market access, from coordination in the regions where we are. And I think what Stanbic provides is also the capabilities, the structuring expertise, and a strong balance sheet to be able to pivot that growth agenda for greening our planet. And so if you look at the way we screen our investments, supporting our clients in that area, you know, and then being able to provide funding for them and knowledge, that will be one way to say that we will contribute significantly towards making a portfolio for lending more than 15 to 20 percent as a green portfolio in the next few years. Mm, absolutely. So um, when you look ahead, Dr. Oigara, what do you see as um, Stanbeck's vision for the next decade, uh, both in terms of uh, the social impact uh, and, 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 you know, your growth as a bank and a lending institution? So for us, three things that have really come out for me. So we continue to remain solid in terms of growth in our markets. So, you know, how do we continue to deliver strong performance that we've seen for our shareholders and also for all our other partners we come up with, the communities that we have. And also leveraging on technology, especially in our markets. We are in the Silicon Savara market. How do we be able to use the knowledge, the skills, the capabilities, the fintechs? Capabilities? And that's really what we want to see. Today, 98% of our clients connect to us online. Yeah, so they onboard themselves digitally from where we are. How do we be able to build that? And then finally, as an organization, how do we do a social investment through our sustainability initiatives that builds inclusive growth? make sure that many of our clients are not left behind, Yvonne. In the, so that, that model of joint growth, inclusive growth, and possibilities for our businesses, I think anchors a long-term sustainability for our bank, as a bank for the continent, as a bank for Kenya, and as a bank for the region. And that's possible even with the, the global economic shocks that we are um, seeing from, you know, what's happening in Russia and Ukraine, uh, you know, global supply chains, you still see that as a possibility? Absolutely. I mean, I would say that every single crisis, if you look at the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, is, there is a, an opportunity there for, for growth. So I see that, yes, you can see difficulties. But over time, we've learned that you see opportunities in those difficulties. And that, for me, is the exciting thing we see in our businesses. And that's what Stanbeck and Standard Bank Group provides in this environment for our markets. Indeed. Thank you very much for making time to speak with us here on Power Talk. You've heard it from the man himself, Dr. Joshua Oigara, who is the chief executive for Stanbeck Bank Kenya and South Sudan. Optimistic about the future and particularly involved and optimistic about investing in green growth, saving the climate we have the resources to do it and he certainly thinks so that's power talk today thanks for watching